this is it, the final game of 1991. And what closes out the final big year for the Famicom? Well, it's one of the worst RPGs ever made. In fact, Ultraman Club 3 is often pointed to as the worst Ultraman game. So we're in for a ride here. Ultraman is the ultra-popular franchise about a space cop in red and silver spandex who grows to giant size to fight the monsters that invade Earth. There have been many different Ultramen over the years, and collectively they're known as the Ultra Brothers. The Ultraman Club series started out as RPGs on the Famicom Disk System, though for a few years in the 90s it wound up getting used as the catch-all title for any game that mashed a bunch of Ultramen together. Ultraman Club 3 has a subtitle, it's Mata Mata Shutsugeki Ultra Kyodai, which can be translated as another sorty Ultra Brothers. The plot of Ultraman Club 3 isn't really a sequel to the previous two RPGs, the world really isn't the same between them. But it's a simple enough plot that you could probably just ignore that. Ultraman finds out about another alien invasion, and heads off to stop it. The interface as you explore the world is pretty simple, and you will interact with things, and you hit select to bring up your party's status. You can also check any important items that you have here, see what monsters you have in capsules, and save the game to its one and only save slot. And that's right, you can now have monster capsules. These act as essentially the magic spells of the game. They're single-use items that have a big effect. You start with nine of them, three of three different kinds, and those starting three will heal the party, revive dead characters, or teleport you out of a dungeon. Getting more capsules is very straightforward. All you have to do is play baseball. Yes, this is real. You'll find these mini-games in towns, where you walk up to them, and then after some very long conversations, a monster will start pitching baseballs at you. You hit the A button to swing your bat, and hopefully you hit one of the monster targets in the outfield. Once you have three outs, or strike out, then the match is over. And if you don't have everything that you wanted, you just go back and do it again, because playing is free. It's not like there's any currency in the game for it to charge you. And yes, that does mean you need to grind out baseball for a long time to have enough supplies. Since everything's free, there's no item shops, you just have to find the right person in town to talk to who will heal your wounds. And anything else you have to find in dungeons. There's one more thing you can do while exploring the overworld, and that's hit the B button to fly. When you're flying, you won't be attacked by any enemies, and you're really going to need to do that especially at the very beginning of the game when your Ultraman is totally solo. You have to reach the first town and find Sheen Ultraman to join your party. Then you can really start winning fights. And the fights are, um, uh, different. Yes, it looks like the exact same fight you always see, but it really isn't. There are eight different options for you in combat, though the menu only shows you four at a time. You have to press up and down to switch to the other menu. There are two different kinds of attacks. A quick attack, which looks like the weird running feet, and a heavy attack, which looks like the judo chop. The quick attacks are supposed to do less damage, but I didn't really see it. The quick attacks will also always go before monsters, while the heavy attacks will go in initiative order, and so might go before monsters. If you're knocked down to less than 25% of your maximum health, then you can use the special abilities. Most of these are instant death attacks. But there's also a group attack that hits everyone. Finally, you can use one of your monster capsules. You can't use the special attacks or monster capsules against bosses. And you might think that makes bosses awfully boring if you can only use the basic attacks during them. And to that I say, yes, yes it does. If you go to the other menu, you can choose to run away, which you have to do multiple times before you'll actually run, defend, use a special item, or average out the HP across the entire group. As you play, you're going to notice a few things in combat. First, the hit chance is super low. Both you and enemies are going to miss a lot more than you hit. Second, you're going to want to keep somebody in critical health at all times. Those special moves are the best way to end a combat fast, so you're going to want to have somebody who's a bit weak. 
Third, there's no experience points. You gain levels by completing story objectives. But there's a twist. Your characters also get a little bit stronger with every 20 enemies that you beat. The game doesn't tell you this. You can't view the stats that are affected, so you won't be able to tell. And the growth rate is pretty slow. But you are very gradually gaining power as you defeat enemies. You just wouldn't notice it. That boost is a small consolation once you know about it, because the encounter rate in dungeons is crazy high. You won't go more than 10 steps without a fight. And if you were getting absolutely nothing for them, this would be even more miserable. Of course, because nobody can hit each other, fights take forever to play out. So the game is just an absolute slog. But the most infamous thing about Ultraman Club 3 is something I can't really show off. In the very final dungeon, there's a boss rush that you have to beat. And after you complete it, and thus the next step would be to fight the final boss, the graphics get garbled and you get sent back to the first dungeon. Now this doesn't make the game unbeatable. If you leave that first dungeon, and then go all the way back to the final dungeon, and then make your way through the entire length of that final dungeon, the boss rush will already be cleared and you can advance to the final boss. But most kids back in 1990 when they saw this, just gave up. It looked like their game was broken, and so they stopped playing. Not that the ending was worthwhile, but they were halted at the very end. So needless to say, Ultraman Club 3 is one of the most infamous bad games on the Famicom. It's really earned its reputation as one of the worst Ultraman games. And somehow, there's going to be a sequel. As I often mention, I really only have about an hour of recording time for each episode, so it can be tough for me to judge RPGs. But even with that short of time, I could tell Ultraman Club 3 was a real stinker. It's just a collection of really terrible ideas all around. Its best feature is having two different methods of progression, but it doesn't tell you about one of them. You definitely don't need to play this one. 